稍微调整一下。OK， 你那个叫什么？你现在录个屏，我现在也录屏。哦，刚开始录了，录了，嗯。录了是吧？行，等一下，我 start recording. Okay, here we go. Okay. So Levy, are you going to uh like sketching something, or you can? Uh, uh oh, I didn't think it was like a share screen thing. So I'm just uh, sitting here in the bedroom with the uh with the oh, phone. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, it's all about so you can uh, sketch in uh, something called last last time you mentioned about this, but it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty open to like questions and whatnot. Uh, sure. You know past, what? The career uh, tips, workshop stuff. Yeah. So we basically have two main um, topic to call to talk about. So one is. Um, the big picture about the movie around the world, right? Oh, okay. And uh, another one is, I know lots of artists in China, they want to get into this industry, and uh, we can give them, you know, lots of tips how to, you know, transfer from the regular concept artists and what kind of ability you want to, you can earn to, to, to get into this industry. Okay. Yep. Uh Sure. Uh, yeah, and uh, I can do some uh, translation from Jin to you, and he can offer some questions, and uh, we can go from there. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah that's completely fine. Okay. Yeah, I gonna <laughs> I gotta speak a little bit Chinese to introduce this uh, talk show. So when go I tell it. it's like yeah, it's like uh, some quick intro something. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so that we're starting. Okay. Okay. 啊、uh, ，聊东聊西聊 CG， 我是六，欢迎大家来到我们第二期的异类 chat。本期呢，我们邀请到的两位嘉宾都是电影界的人士。第一个、呃、嘉宾呢，是来自海外啊、呃、，Motion Picture MPC 这个很牛逼的电影公司的一位呃首席的 Lead Map Painter。The map painter 可以翻译成是数字绘景师，呃，他也是做一些很多 concept artist 需要做的一些工作。另一位呢是我们国内的资深影视类概念设计师苏建苏老师，欢迎苏老师。Hello. Welcome, Levy. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. having me. <laughs> yeah, I just let people know, like you know, we. I have like two big guys for movie today, and uh, it's our second show. The first time we run is for aiming some AAA games. Talk a little bit about the movie. So this okay. time we just want to aim it for the movie production. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. 节目一开始呢，我想跟大家简单的介绍一下啊 ，MPC 这个公司。就是上期我们提到啊 ，MPC。它算是除了 L M 工业观摩，还有那个新西兰的 w i d a 之外的第三大的一个影视类后期公司。呃，我知道国内大概的情况是都是前期，所以说很多国外的后期公司，它做的一些项目是特别的呃出名，有很多的电影大家基本上。在影院看到的基本上都是出自这三大公司，他们都 cover 一部分嘛。呃，建哥，听说你在国内上次我们第一次聊之前没有太多的接触，上次你说你在国内是做一些很前期类的影视类公司的工作。对，我们前在这个公司主要是啊。呃比较杂，它它首先它是有这个艺人经济，然后也有影视制作这一块，然后我们做的是相对比较前期的，就是说，在一个项目一个 IP 呃刚开始开发的时候，然后我们就呃没有剧本的时候，我们就要先介入啊，然后先把一些这个故事观的一个构架，然后做一些角色，然后场景的一些概念，然后一些气氛图啊，然后、okay. 对对对，第一时间要跟这个。呃，编剧啊，导演啊，可能是，呃，提供一些，呃，资源吧，就是说
，就相当于他们给到脚本的时候，然后你把脚本一些内容去图像化，让客户更好的去了解这个产品，对，对,对吧？对。OK， 就是 PPT 阶段。<笑> PPT 阶段。OK， so Levy， yep， you know， you know what kind of work Jen do for China？ 呃、uh, ，in China there's some companies like they do very early concept for the movies. For example， you got a script and a story， and、mm-hmm. uh, it's not really enough to show that kind of ideas to you know uh some producers. So you need a lot of concept artists to, to translate that kind of You know, text into an、uh, image so that、yep. people can better understand it. I'm、yep. not pretty sure MPC have that kind of department、uh, for the very stage. So it, MPC does have an art department.、Uh, they're based in LA.、Uh, oh. It used to be based in London a couple years ago. Okay.、Um, they're they're there for、uh, pitching artwork, which is doing artwork for getting movies to the studio. They're、mm-hmm. also there to help the post-production、uh, stages of the movie development. So、okay. anything specific, yeah,、uh, like what you mentioned with the script and interpretation. This is the very early pre-production and pitching stages that、uh, art department does,、mm-hmm. and in the hopes of winning and winning shows to to the studio. Yeah. So you mentioned that the very very early stage was from basically from the LA and、uh, London before, right? Yeah. So even even earlier before the post production kicks off, there's there's also the pre production stages that happens、uh, with the directors and with directors、uh, the film studios. Okay. And then the the script、uh, comes later to let's say NPC or、uh, Mill or Frame Store. To、mm-hmm. start breaking down、uh, different stages, or、um, start to kind of、uh, work with the material, but there's already a bulk of stuff already figured out conceptually. Okay. For before it comes to、MPC. before they move to、uh, MPC. Yes, 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 yes. So basically, you see, the MPC is, you know, don't have very much opportunity to touch the very early pre-production. So we just focus on the post-production work, right? Yeah, there's a lot of times when you have the shows. There are concept arts、uh, already figured out for some of the、uh, visual challenges,、uh, some of the visual designs.、Mm-hmm. Uh, in NPC, definitely post-production、uh, use these.、Um, some of it is pr-、uh, pre-production as well, so NPC art department, but also earlier, earlier、yeah. than that. I heard from friends. There's only one department in MPC, like in the LA. There's only one department like doing concept. It's not all the studios, right? Especially、uh, in Cannes. At the moment, there's one art department in LA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 呃，刚才问 Levy， 他说，在加拿大这边，就是。呃，工业观摩那边肯定会做一些前期的工作，但是 M P C 这边主要是在美国 L A 那边，那边是出一些很多前期的东西。然后之前有伦敦，但是现在可能就是集中在美国吧，因为那边可能制片人比较多。加拿大这边可能就负责多数的一些就是特效呀，一些后期合成的部分，很少接触一些像咱国内一些很。特别前期的，你就可以去接触客户，去商谈一些就是分镜之类的东西。我觉得这还是国内外来说，电影还是比较比较大的一个区别吧。嗯，其实这个我们这一块在在国内也也不多，其实，嗯，通常都是呃一部分是在这个一部分工作是是在这个建组之前啊、呃，我们在建组之前的时候，嗯、然后这个已经。对，都是以公司的这种形式去去这个去运行啊，然后就是这个其他的这个像特效公司啊，包括这个开始建组之后，嗯、呃，美术组干的事儿可能就是已经有这个剧本存在的一个状态下，然后呃， okay. 根据这个剧本去来那个工作。其实我挺感兴趣的，就是呃，想让这个 Levy 介绍一下，就是。呃，在他们的那个
呃工作领域里面，就是他们的一个特效公司的一个一个设计流程啊，是不是可以介绍一下？ Okay, so Levy,、mm-hmm. yeah, we are very curious about you know the working process when you design something at the company. Yeah. So what is the very first stage you think about, and what's the first like your connection like which one is which guy is you have to sign up with at the very early stage when you're in terms of some concept stuff. Uh. I, I think one of the the most important things for concept art is the information. Okay.、Uh, you're basing all your research, all your planning, all your scheduling or management if you're lead or art director,、mm-hmm. based on this information coming in, and the interpretation of that in,、uh, information. Let's say you have a sentence、uh, from the script. Okay.、Uh, that's the starting base. Uh, then you also have accompanying reference images,、uh, mood palettes, more、oh. elaborate descriptions. That can move more stuff, right? Exactly. All okay. So as the more accumulated information you put together,、mm-hmm. the easier and faster and much、um, quicker you can produce the artwork. So where is the information you're getting from? Is from, from, for example, like. The, the department from LA or other clients you work on? It always、uh, sources back to the client side. Okay.、Uh, because they, like I mentioned before, there is a stage before it even reaches VFX houses that a lot of visual problems have been encountered, and some of it has been solved.、Mm-hmm. Some of it has not been solved, but、uh, all of there's certain there's certainly things that has been talked about. Okay. In a, in terms of ideas and thinking, a lot of things have already been kind of、uh, attempted or tested.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so these are this is the kind of information that's already been kind of touched、um, before. The more, yeah, and all, the more precise,、mm-hmm. uh, more accurate this comes down to the concept artist、uh, in the studio. Okay.、Uh, the easier it is to work. So it means before you touch those information, some ideas already, for example, like roughly down by those clients, they can offer what kind of exactly design they want, and they like、yeah. to 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 do it. Yeah, it depends also on the client side.、Uh, sometimes there's a lot of、uh, pre-production work. Okay. So you'll find lots of concepts, lots of ideas, lots of references already、um, already established. And、okay. then you have other clients where there's not really much planning, and things are kind of thrown together very quickly. Yeah. And it hasn't、so、been really tested. Okay. So what type of work you prefer to do? For example, you prefer they give you lots of information, lots of references, limit they limit you a little bit more, or they give you lots of freedom to work on. Well, you it's. It's、uh, you're you're as a concept artist or any kind of artist really. You're there to serve the client,、mm-hmm. and your job is to kind of interpret what is given down to you and kind of give make it the best you can with based on this、oh. information. Okay.、Uh, because essentially, it's their product, it's their story, it's their vision,、mm-hmm. and as I think as. A, The skill of an art concept artist is how you interpret that and how you communicate it back.、Okay. Communicate it back. Yeah, I think it is really good、uh, point. Sometimes when I got a mood board from a director, I、mm-hmm. feels like they just gave me some very generic thing to work on, and、yeah. uh, I feels like sometimes you can definitely grab some photos from. From Google, someone else, without you know offending their、uh, copyright, you can just use that photos. Why concept art concept artists have to make their own version? So sometimes、mm-hmm. that feels like it's not that meaningful to create something different, you know, from generic photos from Google. Have you met that kind of situation before? Yeah, it's、uh, it's more about the idea, really.、Uh, I don't really、uh, the the photo bashing stuff is. <clears throat> is okay, but as long as you communicate something with it, something、okay. that happens in a scene or something.、Uh, usually, the the photo bashing 
stuff or the photo quality realism is more really for producer end and kind of uh, because you can see something that's rendered realistically. Mm -hmm. It's very well defined. It's very well lit, it, and it's easier to, as as let's say, as a director, it's easier to communicate this to the studio or whoever is the main creator. Yeah. Uh, so you basically mentioned uh, the ideas and the communication is the two key point for concept artists to to translate their language yeah. or information to the team, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, that's I, it. Okay. Yeah. yeah go, go on. Ahead, go ahead. Go on. <laughs> Yeah, I try to remember all you said. I said if you said too much, I you know testing my translation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, it's fine. Hey, so then, he just asked him a lot of that, some very interesting things. He said, uh, they there, is, if they want to do design, there are some things that directly from the customer to get some information, some information. Like we said. 就是头儿让你做个什么东西，他会给你整理出一些，就是一全套的一个 PPT 阶段，嗯，对吧？他给你很多的那些信息，然后一些，啊、对一些参考呀、嗯、图片呀、嗯，有一些客户会把这些图片给的特别到位，就是说信息给你全，他们很明确，我就想要这个方案，哎，<笑>对，他说有一些客户就是说，呃。就是他们都没有测试过，嗯，客户 A 呢，可能是他们那边已经 OK， 知道了这个东西，他就是心里有数。然后客户 B 可能就是觉得我给你更多的自由，然后你可以去自我发挥的东西多一些嘛。不同的甲方，不同的工作模式啊，也是。对他觉得最重要的两点，一个就是你的，呃，就是他说你要 serve your clients， 就是让你<笑>让你那个客户开心嘛。对吧？就是说，你让他们给他们服务，让他们开心，然后，呃，还有提到就是一个交流，他说特别的重要，因为概念设计师就是主要把那个客户的想法去正确的、准确的传达给整个团队，所以说他们可以去，比如说他们看一些一些客户直接给的信息，或者他们的图可能了解的不是特别到位，所以说在这个时候呢。概念设计师就要出现去，去带动整个团队，让他们去在风格上，在在在指向上有一个正确的方向。对，没错，这个概念设计这个东西说白了还是一个服务行业，对吧？都是为了一个，都是为了一个项目服务，嗯，然后最终呈现的效果还是要，呃，老板说了算，呵呵这是最终的。<笑>然后，呃，我们能尽我们最大的所能，就是说把这个。把这个东西就是在我们的手底下能够嗯呈现的最好是吧？把我们这个最好的这个水平发挥出来是吧？能够把这种最好的这种美感啊，呃，最好的一个效果呈现出来。对，对对对对，嗯。好，我打断一下，你是不是在画画？啊，我就是对你们你们聊英文的时候我听不懂，我就画一两，我就画两笔。<笑>你你能你能分享你的屏幕啊？我。对，你看的话，你可以分，你可以分享你的屏幕，你再你再随便画点什么东西之类的。哎，能怎么分享屏幕啊？呃，那个，哦，你如果是叫什么录屏的话，有那个录屏软件的话，可以可以去分享。啊、哦，你是用什么录的？呃，那个 b a n d i c a m b a n d i n g c a m 嗯。你看有没有就是说呃截取全屏呀，或者是分享部分屏幕？之类的之类的东西，那我就挪到一个，那我就挪到一一个屏上面了，就是可以啊，可以。录这这边录着这个对话呢，啊。OK， 你看的话，应该是他有一个，就是说把你那个聊天窗口放小，然后分享你的屏幕。Oh, OK， 你先你先研究一下，我跟我跟 Levy 聊会儿。对，你先聊。<笑> What's up, Levy? Hey. You know what? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to、uh, grab Jen to share his screen because he's sketching something. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, if it feels like boring, you know, just like uh, uh, while listening us like talking Chinese, if it's like a little bit more. <laughs>、uh, it's it's okay. It's all fine. It's all good. Okay, so where I saw your profile, you from、um, Europe. So.、Uh, <laughs> Okay, so I'm my 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 family is Hungarian. 
Oh, okay. Um, I was born in '83 in Romania. Romania, okay. Romania, yeah. Uh, when I was around uh, six, we, me and my my dad moved to Sweden. Oh, okay, Sweden. So my I was well, my sister, my my mom as well. So I grew mm. up in Sweden since uh, since I was six. Okay. Uh, I I did my education there. Um, and I, I did my bachelor's there in, in university. What do you learn? What's your uh, major? At the time, uh, this was back in 2003. 2003, okay. Yeah, so that I went uh, a program that was focusing on kind of the web design and multimedia. Oh, okay, sure. And this was around the first period where I encountered uh, 3D modeling through 3ds Max. Yeah. So that was my first kind of CGI experience. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, I've always been drawing and painting since I was a little little child. Yeah, everybody came from the the interest. <laughs> yeah. Drawing yeah. on kids. Okay. So uh, that's and I and I, I I've worked I've lived abroad since two thousand uh, autumn of two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Where where are you? Uh, currently uh, in Canada. No, uh, after I mean after uh, after you moved from uh, Sweden. Oh, so I I I did six months, well, four to yeah, five six months in London, and then okay. I moved to California. Okay. Uh, for a few years when I worked at Blizzard. Okay. Uh, wow, you worked for Blizzard before? Yeah, I saw several project on yep. your uh, MDB. Yeah, yeah. So I did. Uh, I worked there for two thousand until two thousand twelve. Two thousand twelve. And then I came back to London, um, okay. and I worked in NBC advertisement for about a year. Okay. And then I started my own company. Uh, I just did freelance artwork for various oh, projects. Oh yeah, I saw I saw that one. It's called a uh, Dark Tales. They got a comic book thing. That's Graphic a separate. Novel? That's a separate thing. Yeah, but oh. uh, that's yeah. So this is uh, that's a Kickstarter that uh, got funded a couple of years ago now. Yeah, yeah, I checked the one before. And we, it's been it's been quite a tough, but it's a very educational process. But that's that's a different project. That's a different oh, project. okay, okay. So what's your what's your own company do basically? So I, uh, I, it's basically just freelancing and doing concepts and maintaining work for um, movies, film, TV, projects. okay, games, advertisement, anything really. Okay. And so what's your what's your role in uh, Blizzard before? Concept artist? No, I was a I was a senior math painter. So we worked directly in the cinematics department. Oh, cinematic department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we have the same uh, team at uh, at Toronto as well. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. They have the motion. They just build a new, um, uh, new work, like a new station, something for the motion capture. So okay. basically, uh, Ubisoft Toronto can do lots of motion capture stuff from other studios. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the cinematic team as well. Cool. Nice. Uh, so, so basically, you. Focus only on like CG, that kind of cinematic, filming, movie stuff thing, right? It's been very mixed. I would say everything, a lot of things in terms of entertainment industry, whether okay. it's games, films, advertisement. Uh, okay. So it's quite wide. Sure. You know what? At the very first, before I worked for gaming, my first job is map painter as well. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, but I, I got that offer. I um I didn't go so after I got this offer for, for UB, so I just sorry, I can't do map printer anymore. <laughs> so mm -hmm. because I've already is my dream, so I just yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Cool. Okay. Uh so that you never put on fan shopping. What? 我这边就是我我录屏挪到了这个这个屏幕上，但是我不知道怎么在这个 
我们这个对话里面分享这个这个屏幕。哦、呃，不是，不是在对话，它应该是在那个录屏软件有一个可以分享桌面之类的。如果没有，那也也也 OK。我刚才你知道那个 Levy 在零三年左右，他说是。开始接触一些 CG 部分的东西。哦，零三年的时候啊，那很早。我靠，零三年，现在十五年前大概。嗯。就是他之前，他一开始说在哪儿出生的，我给忘了，好像挪，不是不是那边，反正欧洲那边。他六岁左右就就去那个瑞士了，在那边读大学，然后学的是像我理解就是类似于那种传媒。嗯。广告、广告传媒之类的，然后从那儿他开始接触了一些，呃，就是三 D 之类的东西。然后他先后三 D 是吧？对他应该是学的三 D， 他可能当时在、嗯、就是说之前是纯画画，然后从那儿大学之后就开始接触了一些三 D 东西。然后后来去了什么伦敦还有 L A 那边那个暴雪嘛。咱们看他那个那个 L D B 上，他他他去暴雪也是做的那个呃，就是 Map Painter， 嗯嗯，就是它里边有那个就是 C G 过场动画的一个部门嘛，他就给里面做一些 Map Painting 什么的，然后他就完了事儿以后，他就去了伦敦那边的 M P C， 他那边应该是总部，然后就就来加拿大了，他这是从 M P C 的广告部门做起。咱国内有没有那个，就是，呃，需要一些 map painting 啊，就是或者说概念图之类，在广告宣传部门，影视类的。广告宣传这个，这个、我不太了解，但是应该会需要，应该会有，对吧？嗯，应该会有。就是我们说的市市市场部嘛、嗯。对对对，但咱们这个东西不成体系，现在说让一个。广告广告公司或者什么专门有一个这样一个部门，我觉得也也也不多哈，啊，应该不多。OK， 嗯。然后让 Levi 聊一下，就是嗯，就是怎么样，就是呃为什么要选择这个行业？然后就是说，呃，是什么影响他？呃，是什么艺术家或者什么影视作品啊，影响他就是能够走进这个行业里面？然后。啊，包括平时工作中的一些、嗯、呃灵感的来源啊，聊一聊这些。对我看，我之前看他画的一些特别的抽象，嗯、我就感觉，因为因为 My Penny 嘛，就是数字绘景那些，对我们来说印象里就是很高清的图，去注重细节的东西、嗯。然后他个人练习又特别的抽象，我觉得这儿特别特别有意思。<笑>嗯，对，怎么把平时的练习？就是平时搜集到的一些灵感，转化到自己的实际的这个工作当中去。因为而且就是他们做这种特效的话，就是说，嗯，就怎么样解决这种现在呃观众的这种就是就是审美疲劳的这样一个一个状态，是吧？就是怎么能寻求突破？然后、呃、你说的审美疲劳是是你说的是就是特效现在盛行？对对对对。因为我们需要在哪些方面能够能够努力，能够就是说继续给人们制造一些新鲜感，就是在我们的概念设计领域上能够给给给给人们制造一些新鲜感。嗯 ，OK， 就是脱离那些套路化的那些东西。嗯 ，Sub l e v y o k s o we got the several questions here. <laughs> first one,、okay? yeah, first one is. What motivation makes you become a concept artist? <laughs> I feel like I ask this question for each concept artist interview.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, so say for you, it's like yeah, what kind of motivation to drive you to become a concept artist, or especially for movie, right?、Yeah. Didn't do you know the stuff for gaming or animation? Was a special for movie for you? Uh, so motivation to become a concept artist. For movie, yeah. For movie,、uh, it doesn't really. To me, it doesn't really matter if it's movie or or adverts、uh, or games or commercial.、Mm -hmm. It's 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 coming up with、uh, a unique and new idea.、Uh, oh, that's exciting. 
okay. hasn't been done or seen before, mm-hmm. and it's exploring something something that is fresh. This has always been uh, always been a challenge because um, there's so many trends out out there that when you come so really saturated, then the artworks even they're they're amazing and well done and great. It will mm-hmm. it will not really stand out. Okay. So the challenge is really to how do you find something that that breaks out of it, that breaks out of the trends, it explores new new ways of communicate new, uh, communicating. Okay. For instance, new designs uh, on gun or new designs for science fiction buildings. Uh, that is not the typical, you know, the, the, um, the hard surface that the Star Wars, the kind of Blade Runner-esque stuff that we've mm-hmm. seen many, many times. Mm-hmm. These are actually quite old concepts, but mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're so powerful and strong that they're still today are kind of viewed as sci-fi. They're still science fiction, but the vision yeah. is actually quite old. Like, say me, this tall master guy. Yeah, exactly. Like when you saw those, think about the time they were made. Yeah. So, uh, you know, 60s, 70s, exploring new shape language, the the kind of surfaces, the materials. Mm -hmm. And it's something people didn't see at the time. So for for me as uh, as as a concept artist, these are the new things to explore. What okay. is the next? What is the next kind of thing? What What is there that we haven't done before? So you wanna? It's not only create something you know very exciting. So you wanna create something people can remember. That's right. That's right. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So another question. I saw a lot of your work, especially your sketches, amazing to me. I, you know what? I follow you like almost three years ago. Okay. Thought, wow, that's a guy called Levy, and it, check this out, it's a, it's a website, because at the time I, I aimed to become a map painter, right? Okay. So I learned something like 3D and a camera projection thing, and uh, I searched all the great map painters online, and then at the time, I, yeah, I just found these. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, map painting is basically focused on fashion, high-rise photos, and you have to have a very sharp eye on the high details, high That's level correct. details, right? That's correct. But I find your sketches is really, it's not called sketchy, right? So your brushstroke is pretty sketchy, but the details, I mean, to capture that kind of feeling, right? Yeah. It's the details about how to have very accurate gestures. That yeah. is very delicate to me. So what kind of artists or where you got infer- uh, inspiration from for your own for your own personal thing for well, I've been doing these uh, uh, sketches since 2001 if I can roughly remember 2001 what? yeah before you learned 3D <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah oh so oh, like okay. one yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said in 2001, you saw his in the The inspiration for that is basically, uh, there's been many years ago, I uh, uh-huh. used to uh, paint and post on forums like conceptart.org, uh, CG Society, uh, CGM. Okay, was another big one, and they had these. Uh, even uh, they had these threads called the speed paint thread. It would grow massively after a couple of years. But what is just, caught? What is caught? Like speed? Uh, what? Uh, speed paint. Oh, threads. speed paint. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people would post every single day, like sketches, quick, quick, uh, uh, loose images. Yeah. And occasionally there'll be some really amazing talent doing sketches, and those are the ones that really uh, inspired me okay. uh, to do loose sketching. Mm-hmm. And now it's kind of I, I, I've always enjoyed because it's par- partially it's different to what I do at work, mm-hmm. but it's a relaxing way of painting. I feel. Mm-hmm. Wow! So you keep 
sketching about 17, 16 years ago? Probably, yeah. Wow, it's, it's a long journey. <laughs> it is a long journey. Did you, did you study um, some, you know, the master painters? oil painters before to uh, to build up your style or just like okay I say lots of talent CG artists doing loose sketch paintings so I gonna follow them to do the same thing uh, at first uh, when you kind of start you get inspired your your you look at the artwork and it inspires you 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 start to kind of uh, copy mm -hmm. uh, not like a you know exactly copy, but you're trying to replicate the similar style, okay. and you kind of you kind of uh, struggle. But along the way, when you start to actually study something, you start to think about why certain things are done in a certain way, mm -hmm. and then you you gradually start thinking about the process of uh, of the painting. Okay, and you start to learn about subjectiveness. Uh, you start to learn about subtlety. You start to learn about composition, light, shapes. And when you look at different kinds of styles from the art master classics from 15th century and all the way to 19th, 20th century, mm -hmm. you start to explore different ways of um, visual languages from, like the Impressionism is a great uh, period, yeah. I think. Um, there's also the abstract, the modern, there's also the um, different kinds of portrait styles. All of these visual things kind of accumulate and kind of uh, help you to kind of figure things out visually or it adds to your uh, visual repertoire. Yeah, different, the unique, uh, what do we call it? Like, uh, some characteristic from different artists. Right. Yeah. So we can yeah. Definitely different, capture that. Yeah, different styles. But once you study mm -hmm. something, you start to see or feel different about certain things. Okay. Um, and uh, like I said, you first start to copy, but then the whole world opens up gradually, and you start to be aware of a lot more visual tools, a lot more visual uh, approaches, uh, yeah. and so, uh, and you develop your eye as well. So you see, maybe for beginner to uh, grow up, it's like through copy from masterpieces at very early stage, and then well, they can figure out something myself. I would say doing it this way is a long journey. Okay. Um, but you can definitely get there. The important thing is to have an open mind and think about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, then if you have. Uh, workshops or teachers or seminars mm -hmm. uh, continuously you're exposed to people who have been through the experience okay. and they can say certain things about something that makes you think different about how you paint sure you know okay. uh, when you look at composition uh, it's basically Composing something by using the tools of contrast of shape, contrast of color, contrast yeah, of yeah. light, yeah, and yeah. finding visual balance. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do check lots of like oil men, oil painters, and uh, yeah. I'm really surprised that at that time there's no full shot, there's no lasso tool, you know, <laughs> there's yeah, no yeah, like yeah. perspective tool, but we can do very accurate. You know, yeah. in terms of the silhouette shapes and push the depths, play with yeah. the contrast very slightly. Well, that it's yeah, it's, it's a great step for the human beings to to move. But the thing is, if if you develop your visual eye, mm -hmm. then let's say you experience twenty years or more. Okay. Even even if you're working in different tools, oils or gouache, mm -hmm. you still kind of visually know something is not working or is working. Okay. So it's more about when you learn the tool, you will still have the, the same visual eye to guide you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. The first challenge is, is, of course, understanding your medium, whether it's digital or whether it's traditional. Yeah, know your tools first. Yes. yes. Okay. In China, in China, we have one sentence. It's, 
um, something like so before you battle, so you have to keep your weapon sharp, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess so. So last question is, because you work on the post production for film, mm -hmm. right? So you directly touch in lots of VFX stuff in the movie. And right now, I'm assuming that lots of people say, <coughs> excuse me, so they say, wow, we see tons of digital CG part in the movie. And at the very beginning, it feels like it's amazing. So you can see budget, you can have lots of benefit from have VFX stuff. But right now, almost all the sci-fi movie and the, uh, you know, futuristic movie, they do in the same way, right? And we barely see some, you know, very traditional way to film a film. Yeah. We see too much CG stuff. Do we feel like, is there any way for like filmmakers, they can develop something unique way to, you know, fresh our eyes, not all the movies like about CG is compare, you know, what kind of technology you have, that kind of thing. Mm. It's not like, you know, very, for example, telling story in a very artistic way. Yeah. So the the movie is really at the, at its core a story. Okay. Um, if you combine like all the tools that that helps you develop this movie mm -hmm. to enhance and make the story stronger, mm -hmm. that is the way to do it. If if you start to overuse or if you start to lose control of these tools then you will not achieve to telling that story in the same way. For instance, okay. if you have, uh, I would like to say, compare uh, the first Jurassic Park, which was a balance of CGI, practical okay. effects. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, practical effects, uh, lots of new ground breaking stuff for CGI. Yeah, but also uh, it had a very, it had a quite a, uh, exciting and fun adventure story. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you compare, let's say, compare that with uh, overflux of CGI, it's very distracting. Mm -hmm. There's so many things going on mm -hmm. that you kind of lose your focus, and it's it, visually when when things are thrown at you. And there's a lot of distraction, and mm -hmm. if the distraction is too strong, you will lose your attention, and you will lose the focus of the story. Okay. For instance, uh, there's been, like, if you compare the Jurassic Park and, like, The Hobbit. Okay, sure, Hobbit. Like Hobbit, Hobbit was always, like, very rich, rich in CGI, and very kind of, a lot, a lot of, a lot of things went into it. Mm -hmm. um, but the pre-planning was not the same as Lord of the Rings, uh, and it was a lot of issues with the actual end results of the movie. Okay. And it didn't have the same effect. So, first one, the first Lord of the Rings was very well balanced, still main sticking to the story. The the the, the Hobbit ones was it was too much. Uh, it didn't quite serve the story. I think it didn't quite. It was it was just just too much, visually too much. Okay, so you say without changing, you know, bring some negative effect to the storyline. So yeah. the the purpose for the VFX is just serve the story better. Exactly. Yeah. Right. If you if you're into a, a TV series and you're watching an episode, mm -hmm. and you're in, really into what's happening in in the story, mm -hmm. and then you see something in the background that really stands out. Okay. And yeah, then you I lose your focus. You, so you you kind of see what I mean. Uh, yeah. Or if you if you if you see some animation or the camera moves in a very uh, crazy way that you would not, it would be more like a visual ride. Mm -hmm. Then it, that's another thing that distracts you. Okay. Um, yes, you know, this, there's this one. Just, there's one movie. Um, you know, the the Ready Player One. Mm-hmm. That movie almost is full of 80% CG 
to be honest with this movie, but it's a really great movie and a really well done. But you have to think about the context of the story, because the character is inside CGI. Okay. And is inside a gaming world and is inside these fantastical worlds where a lot of things yeah. can happen. So the story so, is about the CG world, so it's it's okay to you know that's right. use CG to because, serve that story. Okay. Because you're already telling to the viewer like this guy is about to go into a completely uh, fantastical CGI world and anything yes. can happen. Yes. So the, the the viewer is ready. Okay. So without, for example, there's a CG part, it's really well done to serve the story and it's yep. not very distracted. So what yep. kind of direction or points we can, we can um, you know, make it better to level up the quality of the movie? Well, uh, if, if, you, if you do something that, let's say, practical, it's very hard or expensive to build. Uh, mm -hmm that you would do in CGI. Yeah. You would do it in CGI, but to the level that it works uh, within the movie, within the story. Okay, so what, or we say, what kind of way we can, um, we can make a change to the current style of the movie to uh, give audience kind of fresh eye? Uh, it's a it's it's tricky because this is this is kind of decision making that has to happen on very high level, very high, uh, level. Director. like dir director and studio level, um, oh. and there's often compromises on what to keep or have in the movie. Sometimes yeah. a lot of the stuff is basically driven by a franchise. So you have like yeah you have Jurassic World you have Star Wars you have Marvel these are massive universes that also uh, is a franchise so it's like the comic books you have the uh, the merchandise the the toys you have mm -hmm. everything else that is associated with uh, selling products mm -hmm. so they kind of wedge in things like this to help the children or the family to buy this for because they like the movie you know they like to have this toy etc etc mm -hmm. this these are kind of like the things that they wedge into the movies to uh, to promote selling of other products okay so these are the massive big billion dollar projects which is not essentially <laughs> yeah. it's not essentially about the great story mm -hmm. it's it's kind of Story has to be okay enough, but ultimately is about an, a, a ride, a visual experience, and it's for children more than mature uh, or older audiences. Okay, so you feels like you can uh, some directors they can have a strategy for some uh, accessory stuff like a book or toy to well, this is more. I, I would say. Not so much. They're they're more interested in telling a, a vision and a story. Okay. The the merchandise comes from the kind of company mm -hmm. side of things, the film studios who own yeah. the rights and etc. Um, yeah, you know, I, um, when you look around in the toy stores, there's so much Star Wars everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you, when you think of think about how much a toy costs, and think about how much you spend on a ticket, a movie ticket. Okay, so, so you see, so yeah, what you mentioned is like um, online and offline, the, the merchandise and the movie. Mm -hmm. So the overall quality for the movie is about everything. It's not only the one you see in cinema. Yeah, I mean, if you if you do tell a great story and you inspire to create amazing characters, then people would, everyone would really love it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, can look, can look at back at the Matrix franchise, um, mm -hmm. and the Marvel stuff has been really successful as well. Um, yeah. Even on the TV side with Netflix and streaming shows. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take a rest. <laughs> <laughs> sure, thanks. Yeah. Sorry. This is a lot. This is a lot of uh, information. Yeah.
Yeah. Uh, as I know, I'm not pretty clear of what's going on in the China side. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm really curious actually. How how has China grown with the effects and CGI the last ten years? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me uh, let me ask. So that. Hey. 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 Last week, we talked a lot about that. The first question you asked was what? Ah. Okay. The first question. What was it? I forgot. What was it? 哦、uh, ，我想起来，我想起来，我想起来，就是说他那个设计流程吧，就是，不是不是设计流程，一开始就是说他那个，他是些画这些速图，嗯，的东西吧，嗯，他不是从好多年前在画嘛，一开始他说就是跟着，嗯、对，跟着什么叫什么什么叫什么 speed painting， 就是速图嘛，咱们叫，然后跟他们就大概十六七年前，嗯，就开始画这个。嗯然后就从那个时候，他就养成了画这个的习惯。嗯，然后呢 ，OK， 这个就不说了。他说那个，就是电影里边那些特效的东西，就是他认为他提出了一个很好的一个一个一个解释吧。嗯，就是说现在呃，特效跟电影的一个结合，其实有很多是没有结合好。就是说，去分的去去用了过量的一些特效，嗯，然后他举了一个例子，就说在那个一些一些一些 TV show 里面，如果他前面有个有个人在表演之类，但那背景弄得很花哨之类的，嗯，所以说或者说有个什么东西来回飞过，但是飞的那个那个路径就特别的绕，特别有意思，然后你就会感觉被叫什么被那些额外的信息被吸引了，喧宾夺主了，是吧？对对对，他说这个 CG 呢，就是特效部分，主要的作用就是去服务你这个故事的情节。嗯嗯，这一点我觉得他说的特别到位，就感觉你是，你不管做任何的，你拍 CG 也好，或者你做道具也好，主要就是为了你去把你这个故事讲得更明确嘛。或者说让观者更能被这个故事所吸引，这是我感觉确实是有必要有必要考虑考虑，要不然什么东西我能用特效就特效，然后我电影就是在一个讲故事的层面，我转换成了成为一个炫技的一个、嗯、一个一个。其实我觉得这个好的特效反而真的是让人看不出是特效，让人觉得是非常真实的一种东西。一种存在，其实好多电影里面其实真的是，呃，不着边际的，就是不着痕迹的那种啊，不着痕迹的那种特效啊，让人让人感受不到特效的存在，反而真的就是在在用心的再去看这个故事，是吧？对对对，我们看很多这个呃，就是一些甚至是一些文艺片里面，他们那些特效特效其实真的做的很好，嗯，其实说白了还是要有一个好故事。<笑>对啊，我问他说，这个就说如何提高一个电影的质量？嗯，啊，他其实说这个电影是个挺挺挺复杂的，不是说只是一个片儿出来就 OK， 因为你要一些周边的产品，你如何去做线下的去把一些观众去了解这个故事，比如说你的一些星战之类的，或者说一些一些 Marvel 的一些漫画书。就在你看这个片儿之前，你已经对这个故事已经有很了解，或者说你对这个里边那些人设特别的感兴趣。嗯，就是在我感觉就是说在不同的方面去去把住观众的心，然后他们有感觉 OK， 这个电影看起来不会特别的陌生，对这个故事有一个在看电影之前就对这个故事有一个很很全局的了解，或者说我特别想了解整体的故事怎么样。这种是，这种是是就就是扎根到他们那个，呃，本身就像就像那个漫漫画英雄那种电影，其实他们就是之前都都是了解这些故事的，其实，是吧？嗯哼，他们是是是了解这些故事的。然后，呃，就像星战说看星战的都是星战粉。对对对对，星战是一些是是一个，但是如果说像漫威的那些英雄的电影，其实，哦。也是在故事这个层面上在寻求一些突破吧，我觉得是吧？因为、嗯、对，因为你看这个，就像那个蜘蛛侠
翻拍了无数次了，然后，呃，前面几个版每一个版的开头都是都是一一样一个一个一个同样的情节，然后，呃，直到最近的这一版就是在这个复仇联盟里面，他才这个把这个就是这个这个故事重新重新调整了一下，是吧？对对对，嗯，这个也是也是会。我觉得跟特效一样啊，这个故事如果说一直是这么老老生常谈的话，也是会让观众产生这个这个审美疲劳的一点。嗯，就是你觉得在在合理用特效的情况下，也要剧本就变成了更关键的东西呗？哎，说这个这个议论人家的电影，其实我们中国反而是最缺最缺最缺好故事的。<笑>他他特别感兴趣，就是说，在过去十年，中国的，就是咱不说剧本呀、啊、故事之类的，咱就说那个后期电影后期方面，你你了不了解大概是如何发展的一个情况，或者说是近十年是如何发展？这个我不太了解，嗯，一知半解，因为我我主要接触的这个。影视行业这一块，主要是接触的还是前期，甚至我没有没有跟那个完整的剧组。所以说，对于后期，我之前这个做这个，呃，《风之传奇》的时候是是跟的后期，嗯，后期是他们本来已经拍完了，拍完了，然后做了一些这个镜头的补充，嗯，然后对，我们要重新画一些分镜。然后重新做一些设计，然后跟之前拍完的那些东西，他因为他剧本后面有改动，然后我们在里面要补充一些东西。嗯，就是电影拍完了以后，然后再改动这些，我靠，那成本很大。对，那但是没有办法，他们之前演员的调度的问题，那我就不太清楚了。然后， okay. 呃<咳>，要补充这些镜头的话，呃，很多这个就不能是。演员已经演员演完了，人家你就不能再让人家补补补拍这些东西。然后很多时候是用的 CG 人啊，用的 CG 人、嗯、啊，然后替身 CG 替身，对对对对，不敢不敢给什么特写，<笑>就是怕穿帮，都是那种挺严谨、土豆的那种场景。然后后期特效的话，这边就光我知道的就是这一部电影的话，要找了好多个公司来来参与。就是对对对，这个跟这边都是基本都差不多。就美国来一个片儿，加拿大基本所有的特效公司都会分到好多镜头，嗯嗯，去平均完成、合作完成一部电影，而不是说就是单独给一个公司去完成。可能他们的片子质量也会根据工作室的能力去去做一下区分。哎，就是说这样的话，一部电影这么这么多的多多家公司去参与的话，这怎么能够就是保证一个片子的一个，呃，整体的一个风格和质量呢？嗯 ，OK， 这个我还真没想过。嗯，我感觉肯定它有一个把关。我我 ，MPC 肯定是会跟其他公司，我感觉啊，就会合作做一个电影，不可能说这个电影就让你 MPC 给承包了，应该会有合作。嗯嗯 ，So one question, Levy.、Mm -hmm. For example, as I know, we got a the Canadian side got a a, a movie credit something a work from LA. For example, we're gonna separate with several studios, right? It's not like, for example, just MPC take over the all shots of the movie. You MPC probably work with another studio to work on the same project. Yeah, that happens. That happens on often as well when、um, a studio bids for a lot of work. Yeah,、It、doesn't necessarily have to be NPC, but let's say they bid for a lot of work,、mm -hmm. and、uh, the client can be difficult or there's not enough development of the project.、Um, okay, things get delayed. Okay, and in the later stages or try to before that. They realize that in order to deliver, they have to outsource the some portion of the movie that they bid for. You mean MPC gonna outsource some parts to other studio? Well,、uh, they, it's not exclusive MPC, but they work、oh. together with other studios. Let's say a feature film,、uh, feature and film, then、okay. 
uh, they let, there's a sequence or let, let, let's say it's the credit sequence like the intro sequence okay let's say a company bids for that and they realize like oh uh, we won't be able to do it let's outsource it to a smaller company who okay. does CGI <laughs> or effects and they get hired for the job mm -hmm. and they deliver and this uh, that's one way of actually um, uh, when sometimes a job that gets from one studio also gets to another one. But mm -hmm. it also happens that the directors and the film studio decide what portion of the movie goes to what studio. And there's so all kinds the of negotiations yeah. and uh, okay. bidding and etc. that goes into it. So and this is pretty standard. Okay, so who is the guy to, for example, my movie goes to four different studios to work on the post-production. Mm -hmm. So how can we make sure that the consistency of the movie or keep the same style for the movie because it's a work, for, work by different studios? Uh, this is where they split the sequences, so they're kind of different. Okay. Uh, it doesn't disrupt the other studio doing another sequence. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes there is a sharing of assets uh, oh, okay. when it's closely connected together. Okay. Um, but it depends. Every show is a bit different, but usually they split the big chunks differently amongst the bigger studios. Mm -hmm. And one portion goes to MPC, and the portion goes to, let's say, Framestore, so on, mm -hmm. so on. So, so this is about the TV show. How about the movie? Is there any chance, like, one movie being split into different studios working on? Yeah, exactly. The the same thing. So you have each uh, studio, like MPC, uh, has uh, VFX supervisors. Okay. Uh, in the studio, there also there's also VFX supervisors, which is called client side supervisors. Client side, okay. And these two people work together, uh, and the client side supervisor deals with all the studios. Okay. Yeah. So you have the supervisors in the studio itself, and then you have the client side supervisor who deals with let's MPC first. Then it deals with Framestore, then deals with oh, okay. Mail, sure. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're, they're the key client-side supervisors. Oh. And this is for films and uh, TVs as well. You think like Game of Thrones, same, yeah. similar. Yeah. So basically, how to keep the same style and how to keep you know, the same quality for the movie is basically due to the two main guys, right? Yeah, and you have, of course, the director and the editors, they play major roles uh, yeah. in the development. Okay. It's their feedback uh, that is highest. Um, and then you also have the studio who hired the directors. So a director can actually get fired if they're not performing mm -hmm. well or doing as they wanted them to do. Or it can happen, really, that directors get um, fired from projects or swapped out. Um, wow. Because yeah, ultimately, the, high, the <laughs> highest level is really the studio, whether it's Marvel or, or Disney or any other studio, Legendary. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who provide the money for the film studios. They are the ones who hire the directors and directors and, and then there's a whole kind of hierarchy of structure um, okay. that goes into it. Okay, sure. Yeah, I um, I know you're curious about the post production in the past ten years in China, mm -hmm. and uh, actually, Jen was basically focused on the pre production side. Okay. And the post production, he mentioned there was one uh, example he worked before. The the mad a little problem is they they finish the film, and then some script or story got changed. So they have to push to these guys to change after they finish the film. They okay. do storyboarding, they you know, reshoot some scenes, mm -hmm. and they cannot, as an actor, to, you know, to play a game, right? So they use some CG character to instead of this. Yep. yep. Yeah. But as I know, yeah, in China, post-production for movies, it's not that strong as 
say it's the, the, the Canadian studios mm. is the biggest uh, uh, post-production country around the world, right? Yeah. So yeah, it did have kind of different, but as I know, at least like two or three pretty good studios in China. I know there's one Pixmano. Pixmano, yeah. Yeah, there's one uh, in Toronto, and uh, there should be another branch in in China as well, I guess. Okay. Yeah, call it the. I saw they do some Chinese movie on their yeah, website. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Have MPC done any Chinese movie before? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't, know. Know. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Okay. 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 叫什么？啊，说说说什么来着？刚才你那，他问那个，哦，那个就是如何去，呃，一个电影或者一个连续剧，他走了很多的 studio， 很多的工作室去完成同一个项目。就是如何去保持这个不同项目、不同工作室完成的项目去一致的风格。其实他在这儿说的是，不同的 studio 之间是合作的特别特别紧密。嗯，就比如说 IPC， 他接到了一些呃，比如说一个连续剧里边几集，然后他会说把那几集他会再外包给其他的公司。这是一种方式，然后呢，这个 MPC 的里面的 supervisor 就是 MPC 的总监，跟那个外包给的那个公司的总监，他们两个人会合作的特别密切，去保证这个项目的一个质量和风格。然后这是一种合作关系，另一种关系就是说，比如说迪士尼，他们把就是一些我们说就 producer。就是制作人，他们把那个电影分给下面的后期公司做的时候，他们有时候会说，这一部分我们就让 MPC 去做，然后那一部分我们会指定某些公司去做，他不会让你去去去给你以后，然后你去再分。然后呢，他们也会去，他们是他说是最高的一个级别的控制权，就是他们的一些。总监之类的，然后会雇一些叫什么 supervisor， 还有 art director， 就是一个是总一个项目总监，算是一个是艺术总监，就是说这些人都会成一个几何三角形的一个一个结构去合作，也常会聚在一起开会是吧？嗯，对啊，我还是挺听他们说，就是感觉是不同公司的人合作，其实他们比如说迪士尼的人跟这些 MPC 的，或者说跟其他 studio 的头特别的了解。就他们基本上都是相互合作的一个关系，挺挺紧密的，所以说才能保证一个项目的一个一个一个质量问题。尤其是连续剧的话，我听说啊，看一个节目好像说，就你看一个连续剧前，前前三集如果值得看，啊不是前三集之后如果值得看，看到第五六集值得看，那这个连续剧就可以看。如果前三集看完以后觉得不错，然后可能后面几集看的明显质量下降了。感觉这就是前三集找大导演，然后后面都是小导演去接手的。还有这样？会有。我我上回听什么节目我忘了，他会他谈到这个问题，我觉得挺挺搞笑。嗯。对。对。这个确实。有的剧集，有的剧集每一集的导演都不一样，我记得。每一集，我靠。嗯。那个就算。总监吧，总监的事儿。o k 我上次叫什么？咱们之前谈国内，我觉得哈，在游戏和影视这两个领域，算是整个的 CG 领域比较大的。但是动画来说，可能没有这么大的一个一个人群，所以说，你是当时是如何，就是或者说步入这个圈的，或者说为什么没有选择做游戏、做做电影？我呀，我
，我到现在为止，其实我都算一个新人。<笑>我算一个新人，你们都是我的前辈，<笑>对，你们都是我的前辈，对，然后，嗯，这个行业来说，我我我原来是我原来是这个不是专业的学美术的嘛，然后一直是、嗯、原来一直是自学，嗯，后来 o、okay. 对，后来就是能够接了一些，开始接一些外包，也就是自己在老家、嗯、啊，自己在家里面接一些外包，嗯、然后。再往后的时候，就是能，呃，接触到一些，就是能画的好一点了，是吧？能画的好一点了，然后能够就是在网上发自己的图，然后因为也是比较喜欢电影这一块，因为觉得跟自己在家做外包相比，以及跟做游戏相比，我觉得做电影能更接近我所追求的一些想画的东西啊。可能那时候就觉得就题材东西会少或者说在题材上比较、啊、对 OK。中国的游戏，你知道这个这个游，其实整个这个娱乐产业应该都是比较比较落后的。但是相对来说，我觉得电影的话，那个题材能够更广泛一些。啊，对对对对对,对,对,对，相对于游戏来说，确实确实确实稍微广泛一些。对，而且中国现在没有什么三 A 级的那种大作，那种能够让你就是这个做概念的来说，能够发挥自己的那种那种那种特长，不像你们在。在国外是吧？就可以，嗯，接触到那些。我感觉国内挺挺挺屈才的。对我，我认为在前期画画阶段，单纯说画画阶段，嗯，和先不说设计，就纯功底塑造之类的，国内的水平要比国外的要强很多，是吗？所以说，对，所以说，对于一些画画的人，在国内。接触不到一些很理想的项目，或者很很高质量的项目，确实是一个挺挺挺遗憾的一个事儿。但是往好的方方面想吧，就是这些年也不断的有有有的人在做一些尝试，比如说现在这个做这个主机游戏的也开始开始越来越多，嗯，可能慢慢会有好转吧，嗯、包括电影。<笑> OK， 嗯，你对如果说一些新朋友想入行的话，比如说，就是我完全不知道这个电影行业是怎么样，然后如果我想进入电影行业，或者说从游戏转到电影，有没有一些给朋友的一些建议？我个人的想法，我是说，如果这个想进入一个行业，就要先去。学习吧，先去做一些了解，啊，就是说你在这个行业里面你需要做一些什么。就我的领域来说，我觉得首先就是，因为我们中国的这个这个影视行业的话，它没有像这个那个好莱坞那样，就是说分得那么细，就是说工业化那个流程那么成熟。所以说我们现在中国的这些这个想想想要进入概念设计这个领域的话，可能需要掌握的技能要全面一些，是吧？嗯，不光是做这些，呃，设计的一些线稿，你还要，呃，就是说，场景啊、角色呀，我觉得都要拿起来才行啊。包括甚至包括气氛图，因为你跟一个剧组可能这个活会干的比较杂，分工不会那么的明确。然后就是说，我觉得要要要攒作品，攒一个就是自己的一个呃作品集。就是说，你第一次去面试的时候、嗯，啊，第一次投简历的时候，一定要让这个这个公司或者是剧组能够看到你整体的一个综合实力，然后你的设计能力、你的表达能力，啊，大概就是这样。嗯嗯。啊，然后就是就是所就就像我刚才说的，就是尽量全面一点嘛。啊，全面一点。嗯。对，其实这个说到，有很多国内的一些学生问我，就说，哎，我那个。我想做人设，<笑>就是说，或者说我想做场景，嗯，就是他们把那个设计分得特别的细，就是说我只专攻某一项，嗯，当然这个是在，据据我了解，在公司里面，就是有些人你可以去跟你的那个总监去去传达你的意思嘛，比如说我就是特别想画人物，所以说你有你有机会去完全做这个，但是说。去体现能力方面的话，还是需要特别，确实需要全面发展一些，比较比较
符合公司的意愿。对，而且就是说，你如果，哎哎，还有一个是题材，就是说你你你画的东西这个题材，啊、呃。我觉得就是说，这个概念设计师能够体现出一个能力的来，就是设计能力的这种作品的话，我觉得这个要有一定的指向性啊，就是就能够有一些发挥空间的啊，比如说奇幻是吧？呃，东方奇幻啊，或者是这个这个对于科幻呃机械类比较擅长的，然后就就是指向性多一些。然后，很多人就是很多这个老板啊，或者是他们就是说对这个东西不太懂的话，他你说你说这些东西，你说这些东西你能画，但是可能可能。Sorry about that. 嗯。No problem, man. OK, that's OK. <笑>就是，嗯，就是说，你的简历作品上，你的简历作品上面你，呃，画了这个这个风格的东西啊，这个题材的东西。呃，比如说我我画的是这个这个这个呃科幻的，但是那边就会那边就会问你，哎，是否擅长他们的就是就是他们会直接看你的作品是不是符合他们的需要。对，这跟这跟在对在国外这边面试特别注重就是你的你的作品准备的风格。比如说我我想针对，比如说我想针对 Blizzard 暴雪。那我的作品集的构建，一个里面的一些图的一些搭配，就完全要针对你暴雪的一些游戏的风格去走。嗯，对对对对。那你说，呃，所以说，你如果你的这个自己的作品啊，就是说，呃，比如说我我比较全能，我什么都能画，就是说我的这个我这个我的作品集里面，我又有又有科幻的，又有奇幻的，然后我又有一些卡通风格的。所以说你在面对不同的剧组或者不同的这个项目的时候，进不同的这个这个项目组、不同的公司，你拿出这这一部分相应的作品来，就是说你的选择性会会会更多一些。对对对，然后你的你的所谓的话语权也会更多一些，对，对全面的。嗯 ，OK OK， y o u Levy， same question for you. For example. Uh, yeah, I talk a lot with Jen about you know for beginners how to get in this film industry and、uh, or some concept artists for gaming.、Mm-hmm. How to transfer from gaming to to、um, uh, the film? You know what the 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 project, especially for the game project in China, is is kind of limited. Okay,、right? it's, it's all about the mobile games. They barely have like AAA games, but Some、um, concept artists in China, they are great, well done on you know render, that kind of shading tones. Everything、mm-hmm. is pretty, pretty outstanding, but、mm-hmm. they don't have really great project to work on. So yeah, it's a little bit petty. And、uh, yeah, so what's your recommendation for beginners to get in an industry like film industry for those? They have no idea what's going on there. Okay,、um, there's a lot of there's a lot of work.、Uh, like the the wealth of knowledge to learn is much bigger now than say ten years ago.、Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of workshops. There's a lot of online courses. There's a lot of YouTube channels that you know similar to what we're doing. There's a lot of podcasts. Yeah. Uh, of artists connecting together, experienced on different levels to share、mm-hmm. uh, knowledge. So I would say, if you're completely fresh, to、mm-hmm. start just researching really、mm-hmm. to find what it is we'd like to do. Okay.、Um, in terms、yeah. of skill sets and experience.、Mm-hmm. Um, Study what like a professional artist has on their portfolio, not just the personal work,、okay. but also like the professional work that they do. Okay. And let's say you have very senior, very kind of well-known names.、Uh, you can put this as a high level of achievement. Okay. So you, as a junior artist who wants to break in, try to try to understand how this certain artist reached. The way he did, what、uh, what is the quality that they're doing, and your journey is about understanding how to achieve this.、Um, so、I know. Materi- 
as I know yep. lots of beginners, the curious a lot by your approach for that kind of certain image, that quality. For example, I don't know 3D, right? So I can never achieve that kind of quality work. So the they kind of feels like I have to learn more about software or well, this is that. so this is uh, there's there's always been a stigma with certain learn type of learning okay that it's supposed to take long and it's supposed to be very difficult to understand but that's with today's tool that's not quite true okay sometimes you have YouTube clips of five minutes Okay. Showing a very simple feature, a very simple function, mm -hmm. but but those five minutes can actually open up a new way for you to do something. Okay. Uh, so very, it, it's more about certain principles uh, because you can do a very simple demo, very crude little example, but mm -hmm. the artist can already start thinking of how they can use it. Okay. Yeah, so this, is the why, so this is why we invite you here. <laughs> yeah, we uh, let them to know some very valuable suggestion. Yeah. Um, professional artists, they can definitely open their mind to, uh, yeah, to move forward. Yeah, yeah. It's not just, I mean, it's, it's great to know trip, tricks and tips, absolutely. Big tips, okay. Yeah, it, but it's, it's more about how you think about learning mm -hmm. and how you grow from it. Mm -hmm. uh, like the the most the, the quickest I've seen people achieve like a, an industry level from junior beginner mid high mm -hmm. is basically based on how they're willing to learn mm -hmm. how much how many willing. so in film how many years you were to take from say junior to uh, become to senior. Well, this is an individual question because you c I can't really say 10 years, 5 years because okay. you can have uh, an artist who's really inspired. They can learn everything within, or not everything, but a lot in okay. a very short period of time. Like sure. I said, it depends on how you're, how open you are to learning new things Okay. and how, of course, how hard you work at as well. Um, on the other example, you can have someone who's not really that interested but does it anyway. Mm -hmm. They develop much, much slower. So I can't really say a year amount to this. Yeah. So but you have to look at the individual. But generally speaking, five, five, six years, something? Um, well, there are different kind of levels of like you can get into the industry as a junior okay and there, you, there's different levels of tasks of, of complexity and challenges mm -hmm. so they can start working of course but you know the more experienced the more widely skilled you are the more flexible the more kind of different things you can do is where you become uh, mid senior and lead and supervisor and so on yeah I uh, as I know, I'm not pretty sure I'm, 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 uh, I'm right for this. So basically, concept artists for movie are uh, transfer from map painters. Is that true? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. You don't have to be a map painter to become a concept artist. And you, you don't have direct. to be a concept artist to be a map painter. It's, <laughs> okay. it, doesn't, it doesn't quite work uh, in a yeah. similar way. The only connection they have is that they work very directly with a visual tool, with a visual kind of format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both dealing with 2D images, they're both dealing with lights, uh, all of these things that are kind of connecting. Okay. Uh, the main thing that really makes a concept artist strong is his his way of communicating his, the, his ideas and creations uh, visually. Okay. The matte painter is more uh, focused on realism, and yeah. make, making things invisible in the background for any yeah. kind of project. Yeah. He's not really dealing too much with exploration of new ideas. Mm -hmm. His challenge is to, is to create complete and undoubt, you know, uh, invisible realism, basically. Yeah. 
but to it's a different kind of challenge because you have to be very sharp eye with details you have to have very good understanding with light you yeah. have to have very kind of keen senses visually to adjust something because sometimes you adjust something very slightly mm -hmm. and it doesn't work okay so this is more the strengths of the map painter the yeah, concept the yeah, concept so artist painter. yeah go ahead yeah. Yeah, as I see, uh, the map painters, their work is basically the final output to the final project. That's right. Right, so concept art is, is more pre-production, so... Yeah, it's ideas. It's yeah, ideas. ideas. Yeah. Okay. But um, to, to me, it feels like it's really hard to, to be a concept artist for a movie. Because <laughs> that check on something on the indie, it's, it's really hard to to find any job opportunity for concept artists, especially to find some freelancer to do this. But for Matt Painter, it's a little bit more opportunity for you to uh, to find jobs. Uh, yeah, this... Uh, mm, it's yeah, different kind of skills. Uh, yeah. There's definitely... What has happened in the last last decade is that I think the the growth of concept art has just grown uh, insanely, um, and you have much much more people willing or wanting to do concept art than you have map painters. Oh, okay. So this has actually shifted the amount of people that is out in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of people love hanging on art station or these sites and be inspired by very visual images, uh, lots of concepts, lots of painting, mm -hmm. as opposed to doing like DMP and background extensions. Yeah. Um, and so simply put, there is much, many, many more concept artists out there. So more you have more uh, competition. Mm. You have also, it kind of pushes uh, how much you earn as well, mm -hmm. because the companies have a greater choice of people mm -hmm. uh, to choose from. And usually mm -hmm. concept artists or the concept art teams are always smaller than the map painting teams. Oh yeah, definitely. Cause map painting, yeah. the targeting to finish the project and concept art is back for a movie, sometimes the guy have great ideas so that he doesn't necessarily have 10 people to work on. That's right. right. So right. art departments in general are usually quite small. How many How many people in there, like, under your department? Uh, at the moment, I, I, I don't know. Uh, oh. But if I'm to guess between four to six, seven, Something Four like this. Six, seven. Okay. Yeah, this is just a pure guess. Uh, I don't. I don't really know at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And uh, yeah, go in, on. in in the teams, you'd have different skill sets. So you would have someone who has a bit of three D knowledge. Mm -hmm. You have someone who's great at uh, character or. Um, uh, figure drawing and more focused on character and character design. You have someone who's great with, let's say, mood boards or environment designs. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a bit of uh, flexibility in the department. Mm -hmm. So let's see. I, I do believe lots of people know how to become a concept artist. So, for example, if somebody want to become a matte painter, Mm -hmm. So, what kind of skill set are they gonna require to become a map painter? Uh, it would it would help them a lot if they start to understand photography. Photography, okay. Yeah, uh, because we work very directly with plates and with uh, photographs and references. Yeah. Uh, second is I always recommend map painters to actually <laughs> paint, not just collage. <laughs> okay. Okay, I understand. Uh, you know, in the old classic ways of map painting, you used to have the glass uh, format and you would paint on top of the glass. 
Yes. And you would have a camera filming the 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 shot, and that would be your matte painting. Yeah. Uh, it would be. It's called that because it was be it would be matted to that together with composite. Okay. Today, I think the term is a bit not quite accurate, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still stuck with us. Mm -hmm. Because we do a lot of 3D CGI uh, painting and collaging, so we're kind of like collage environment CG artists. Okay. More like. Does he need uh, any, for example, skills by using 3D or like a Nuke or Maya, that kind of thing? Yes. So As a math the, painter? Yeah. The, like, uh, well, years ago, it used to be good enough if you only knew Photoshop, like, that would have... Uh, okay. But now it's become uh, wider in terms of skills, so usually most of, the most of the cases, a map painter also knows a bit of compositing, so a bit of Nuke. Um, and also a little bit of 3D, because they need to project uh, their yes. painting on geometry. The camera projection, thanks. Exactly. And once yeah. again, photography comes important because they need to understand the camera as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So not I, just I, animation and references, yeah. but uh, because we're working with plates all the time. Yeah. I know you are a really great uh, talk of, uh, photographer, oh, like a pho photomaker. You. Yeah, I saw lots of great photos you post on the Facebook. It's really like, like, yeah, it's a pure art. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's very really nice. I okay. recommend map painters to actually like sketch and paint, like sketch and paint. Okay. Yeah, like loose uh, sketches, like, like speed paint stuff. Like, what do you do? Uh, it, it's. I found it helpful to understand lighting and paint okay. light. Okay. Because you're defining shapes and you're defining a shape within a lit environment, and mm -hmm. usually map painters are trying to extend something, but they need to understand light to ch in order to change it. Okay. Sure. We are probably finishing in uh, 15 minutes or 10 minutes around that, okay? That's okay. Okay. So. Suda. Hey, hey. Ask you a question. Hmm. 就是刚才拉瑞说了个很有意思的事儿就是说在一年前就是一些他说那个做书的会景嘛那个人还是挺就是只会Photoshop就可以然后现在慢慢的要求就是你的技能需要更丰富一些就是我不只会Photoshop我
挺到位的。要不然很多人说，哎，我会拼图，我就是买 Painter； 我画不好，我会拼图，我就买 Painter。还有他会提到一些画素图嘛，嗯，就是我感觉就是说在光影的控制上，在 m a p p i n g 里面是特别的，就是微乎其微的东西，嗯，很微妙，你你感觉不到，但是说它确实起到一个很很很重要的作用，嗯，然后其次他说再是叫什么，你需要会懂一些其他软件。些那个玛雅呀、New 克之类的，就一些合成类软件和三 D 软件，其次才是这些东西。所以说，对于想成为 m a p p e n d e r 的朋友们，可以就是还是要从最基础的东西去去练习、去学习，不要太专注于，比如说，不要沉迷于技巧，哈，对，跟画画其实是一样的。嗯，对对对。我据我所知啊，那个我看到国内的很多的做电影的朋友，就是尤其在电影的一些图里面，他们用照片的频率特别高。嗯，你对这个对 My Painting 来说当然是特别的，就是需要嘛。他们也不是说是完全依靠照片嗯，但是照片级别高清的图才是项目最终所需要的东西。因为你 m a p a n i n 出的一张图，它就是直接放到电影里面嘛，嗯，就是跟 Concept 做的完全不一样，所以说你需要特别高清，倾向于制作是吧？那更倾向于制作，嗯，它就是一个成品，对，出来就是一个就是一个成品的东西，嗯，是应用到应用到影片里面，直接应用这个这个到到背景里面或者怎么着的是吧？对，嗯，它的精度要求还挺高的。对他刚才说了一个很好很有意思的现象，就是说那个那个 m a p a n d e r 这两年来说越来越少，因为 Concept 人越来越多，因为 m a p a n d e r 就他对那个技术上一些要求呀，你做的东西就是完全要放到你的成品里面嘛，所以说你没有任何叫什么回旋的余地，发挥的如果说嗯对，就特别要满足项目需求，而且你现在。在 R C 上，他说很多人会画画，他就可以自称为 Concept Artist， 所以说导致了 Concept Artist 越来越多，竞争越来越大，然后做 Map Painting 的人就越来越少。呃，说的这个 Concept 这个，其实好多其实也是画这个什么领域的都有，很多还还还是画插画的比较多，其实。啊，其实它跟这个这个概念设计也也不是不是很沾边其实。对，现在有最常见的问题不就是插画插画师跟概念设计师有什么区别？嗯嗯嗯嗯、这个确实。对象不同，对，服务对象不同，然后表达的内容不同，这个是关键。对对对，就是 concept 更倾向于去为客户服务。对，为项目服务。而插画其实都是一个自我表达的一个过程。嗯，追求的方向也不一样。对。那你在那个，比如说在做图的时候，我看了一些你的图小细节啊，确实有拼照片的嫌疑。我想问一下，你对这个作为 concept artist 来说，概念设计师来说，或者或者说插画师来说，我们对照片的一个拼图的一个使用？你有没有一个什么，也不能说见解，比如说版权之类的，我们就不说了。我们就说，如何去合理的去利用素材，在在创作过程中，这个在我们工作流程里面是一个有有效的一个手段。我觉得，呃，也不光是不光是我们哈，这个应该是一个世界通用的这么一个一个一个方法。嗯、呃，这个是很能，就是说有这个照片的一个辅助的话，它是能够很好的这个快速的提高自己这个画面当中的一些信息量啊、呃，一些精度、嗯，包括你们画一个呃城市跟城市有关的一些一些一些场景啊，比如说一些什么爆炸呀，然后或者是什么这个战争场面啊，那你说如果纯纯去画，就根本就不可能达到那种。那种效果，而且做概念设计的话，很多时候，这个两两天就要出一张图，两天出一张气氛图，那你这两天里面
是其实，如果说用用用了照片素材的话，可能几个小时就能拼出来。但是如果说你纯纯去用手画，那肯定是要要花好长时间才能才能达到这个效果。所以，首先我们是先呃呃呃追求一个效率啊，快速的快速的表达。然后，在这个这个素材的使用上吧，反正就是哎有。这个版权这个问题，我觉得就是就是有个底线，就是说，用一些，还是用一些没有没有版权的，包括一些付费的一些素材会比较好一些，对吧？最主要的就是不要、嗯、不要叠别人的作品，这个这是比较关键，这这算一个。OK， 嗯 ，OK， 行，那个对，既然你说贴图这是个手法，就是为了效率嘛。对吧？为了表达信息的一个准确性，在规定的时间内，那你会不会，比如说，所有的细节，我基本可以都用从从都从素材中找到，因为我看到很多现在做电影的一些朋友，他们的图画的成分特别少，百分之八十七八十左右，基本都是就是去去去拼图嘛，然后在拼图上去调整光影。就他们所画的感觉，就是一个人肉渲染的一个过程。这就形成了一个什么？就是形成一个套路化。你会发现，这个就是你就是过度依赖这个贴图的话，你会发现这个好多不同的，就包包括我们中国的哈、啊，就是那种东方奇幻的那种项目里面，而且好像就两个截然不同的项目里面会出现同样的图，就是同样的素材，甚至同样的角度，同样的构图，你就觉得这个觉得很尴尬。然后他们就会把这个设计师画出来的呃贴出来的这个东西拼出来的这个东西，直接应用到电影里面，你就会发现两个电影会特别雷同。这就是我我之前我说的这个套路化的一个问题。这个嗯，设计师自己本身的一个呃，我觉得一个他本身的一个自我表达一个自我表达是一个构图的能力是吧？以及呃，对于一些创造性的一些塑造的一些能力，我觉得是必备的。嗯，这个照片在我们这个里面，只是让它提高里面的一些不必要的信息量。主要的东西还是需要我们自己来设计，我们自己亲手去画，或者是，嗯，画，呃，画一个草图，或者是你你现在这个三 D 软件也越来越傻瓜，你也你也可以去去建模嘛，对不对？嗯，不能太依赖这个照片素材。OK， 就是你说照片用多了会导致一些信息的雷同太多，然后很套路化。对，然后可能更多的人就会依赖照片，然后他们自我表达或者组织画面的一个能力就会越来越。而且啊，而且会有一些人就就就在这里边就浑水摸鱼，就是说我不会画画，但是我会拼图，他也可以自称为是概念设计师，你知道吗？这个就很尴尬。对，行业里面就中国内的行业里面很多很多这样的所谓的概念设计师啊，其实他是。哎，嗯，加引号的，加引号的概念设计师。OK， 我不知道国外是是一个什么什么状态，肯定是要，我觉得呀，这个这个这个现状要比中国国内的要好一些。嗯，中国是缺缺人才的，但是缺，但是就是缺画的好的，嗯，要不然就是那种市面上的那种概念设计师一抓一大把，真的没有什么意思。其实国内的东方题材特别的有有有独特性，如果比起国外的一些东西来说的话，嗯，就是你你你国外的一些一些概念设计师，他根本就是不太了解你，你这个文化他都不懂嘛，所以说他对在那边这中国这块区域对他们来说就是一个盲区，所以说中国有这个很好的一个优势的一个一个一个一个文化上的点，确实是需要更好的一些去利用一些。嗯，但是，但是比较盲目吧，现在就是，嗯，因为因为这个文化上其实，你看起来表面上看起来是这个，呃，都在追求这个呃呃中国化的这个这个这个中国风或者怎么着的，但是其实上，它其实是一种，还是在向外界的模仿，停留在目前这样一个状态，它没有，它不太。对于自己本身的这个东西，其实他是不是很自信的啊？嗯嗯，还是不自信的。因为我们现在看到的很多就是所谓的中国中国风的一些东西，它其实是在是在模仿周边的，模仿模仿一些日本
啊，甚至韩国的一些文化元素，再再加入到我们的这个这个这个设计里面。对于中国本土的一些，反而近几年开始重视起来了啊。前几年的话，就应该是嗯，这个元素应该是挺混搭的啊，挺混搭的。现在开始重视起来了，我看大家对这个， okay. 嗯，对这个。Sure, what's up, Levy? Hey, thanks for your patience. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> we talk a bit about, you know, the map painters and the concept artists, and、mm-hmm. uh, there's a very interesting moment in China. Is bunch of artists the only know, or we say it's not like only know. We have they have very weak scales on painting. And、okay. they basically take advantage of references and、uh, photos to do the photo bash for their work. But sometimes the work is working, but sometimes it's not. And they call themselves concept artists as well.、Yeah. So in terms of photo bashing, this kind of you know technique. So、yeah. how do you see photo bashing in concept, not mapping? Uh, but the photo bashing is. Is is a work is a is a tool to kind of produce something very quickly, to suggest、okay. realism. Yeah, James mentioned the same thing. He said it's everything to work for the efficiency. So yeah, that's correct. But、okay. to make something completely realistic, you have to fine tune a lot of things. Yeah. And often there's no time when you're doing concepts. Yeah.、Uh, so you have to know how to work with photos. Mm-hmm. And you need to kind of understand the painting and shapes and light to kind of blend things together,、okay. so it becomes a, it becomes a new image. Sure.、Uh, so and this this balancing act of various photo elements, you kind of need to make it either it's realistic as a photo, or is it more impressionistic as a painting. And somewhere、mm-hmm. in between, you can balance these things. Okay. To make an overall kind of image that is consistent and works. So and it's really it's really important to find that kind of balance, you know, yeah, of yeah. using photo and、uh, how much you paint. Yeah, because you have, let's say, you're out searching for Google images. Yes. And all the reference you find that you want to use in your photo bash. Has very different resolutions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, map painters, map painters pay lots of attention on the resolution. They have to be match perfect. That's right. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. And you have to kind of balance these things. Even as a concept artist, if you put photobash something together out of perspective and think it will stand out. Yep. Because even if the client is not an expert in visual languages, they will. Tell that something is not right. Okay. So you still have to provide a kind of balanced image, even if you used photos. Okay. Yeah. So they mentioned,、uh, like, like Jen told me, for example, he's not the guy like using photos, but he do use photos for production work. And、yeah. uh, he mentioned there's one point looks pretty reasonable to me. For some major information,、mm-hmm. it's better to to draw, to paint, to、yeah. express your own idea. For some like side information, you can you know for save time, you can definitely use photos rather than you know for lots of major informations use photos instead of you paint. Sometimes、yeah. it's because, for instance, you use、uh, some Chinese culture thing and、uh, you use this for the movie. And、another guy used it for another movie, and、mm-hmm. maybe the output in the movie is exactly the same. But it's two different concept artists, two different projects. But they just share something very similar elements in the photo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that a common problem thing in the film film industry as you see? Because I、uh, see lots of concept artists for film. They use a lot of photos. Yeah. 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 The、um, one on another reason why photo bashing is used because it is easier to communicate with a client who is not visually、um, understanding. 
Okay. If you produce an artwork that is impressionistic or loose, to and you show it to the client, and you're like, "Here is my great idea about this shot," or whatever it is. Okay. They, not. You can you you can all you, it can happen that the client doesn't understand how it will look in the final image, like on the frame. Okay, they cannot take the they cannot take the next visual step in terms of visualizing it in front of them as a final like on the movie screen result. Yeah, creative more creative people work with visuals directly can understand this. Okay, that the concept is purely communicating an idea, mm -hmm. and that it's all it's all about this. It's not really so much about the rendering. But it's harder for someone, like if you talk to a producer and show an image, like, oh, this is a nice sketch, but I don't understand how this is going to be final movie. Okay, so sometimes you see the purple, they use uh, the photos, they just want to, you know, better transfer their information to the client yes, or director. that's right, that's right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And if, yeah. you have, if you have an artist who can blend these things, like uh, a good idea, a good level of realism in the image, so it feels realistic, mm -hmm. and it's easier for them to interpret this for the final result. Mm -hmm. Then you have a very skilled and very, very good concept artist. Okay. Who can take all the information and understand the delivery uh, levels or delivery quality, mm -hmm. and produce a few images. So the, I would say the criteria for you, for example, you hire a concept artist, you just, you know, to tell if this guy has the ability to convey information very clearly and uh, efficient, in action. Yeah. It's well, not only how much, how high level you can render. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, when we worked on, oh, few years ago when I worked at Pinewood uh, well I did a freelance job and the concepts were more about doing concepts for practical stuff that they would build for the mm -hmm. set mm -hmm. these visual images were not about presenting to higher clients these were more practical concepts okay so they were not really you know the flashy cool looking concept art it yeah, was yeah. more concepts for for uh, a design of a vehicle. Okay. So that part, that part of the concept art is also very important because you're communicating an idea that needs to be built or needs to be somehow constructed. Okay. Um, like the more presentational stuff is more about context and more promotion. Okay. And introducing new new ideas and new uh, new things and also kind of impressing the client because you can make a really nice image then it's easier to to sell mm -hmm. sure so uh, I saw your credit on MDB work on the alien the most new alien uh, yeah that was uh, the recent one we finished at MPC yeah yeah so what what kind of part are you working on for that movie um, I was a lead on the show oh, okay yeah, so I had a team who did uh, a lot of the environments uh, on the movies, nice. on the movie, and now my role was to kind of uh, artistically, technically, and in terms of management, help help the show and help the artists. Yeah, I know. In terms of your level guy, you you basically just to to make sure that your members, you know, yeah. work on the right direction. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw your 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 credits. Amazing, the room, the movie. Oh, I I love that movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a very artistic. It win uh, it win a reward or something, right? That year. Uh, might have been. I haven't really checked. Yeah, I remember. It. It's really high points on IMDb. Like, mm. yeah, I, I love that movie. Very artistic uh, way to telling the story. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, this is today, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Levy, for participating in our talk. Thank and, you for uh, having me. If there are any uh, 
Any final questions? Or whatever you want. Uh, um, yeah, so what, sure. what is most curious about, say, China or, you know, in the gaming industry or film industry? Or what oh. is, or we say it another way, it's like, what is your, the future picture you want to see in the next level, movie industry, whatever? Oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because, God. yeah, you, you are the big guy in the movie industry, and what do you expect to see in the future? Maybe the filmmakers can, I don't expect the, 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 the watch my talk, at least I can we can understand what do you think? What do you expect? Yeah. It? Uh it's to put it simply, I would just like to see something that is unique and new. Yeah. Okay. Um in terms of what? In terms of any kind of any kind of design really. Uh Okay. I'm, I'm both a feature, like animated feature, like uh, cartoons, but also fe feature films. Yeah. Um, something that I kind of, you know, explores uh, new visuals or new new ideas, new kind of something we haven't seen before. Wow. And that's that's really. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's really it's really hard. I know. Right I, I know. Any, any new stories or technology is already being taken. So it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so of course it's going to be very challenging to produce something that feels, feels that much uh, um, fresh. Okay. okay. But the, so the, 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 thing, the thing that will still maintain throughout since movie cinema is to to at its core tell a good story. Good story, okay. Yeah, that still has to work, but all the okay. whole world and the whole kind of uh, everything around it can be like completely new. To you, okay. Wow, yeah. that is a lost possibility. <laughs> yeah. So you don't really, for example, pay much attention if you try this something very different or very unique, but it's very possible to fail you know it's not very successful very out I know I put it but you still feel like if you dare to try something new I gonna spot you yeah 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 I uh, you know it doesn't have to be a big budget it has you know it doesn't really matter um, it's it's just uh, yeah, something that kind of you 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 watch something and you're positively experience what you're seeing and you okay. will want to watch it again and kind of like oh this is really this is really amazing sure um, I'm, I'm kind of waiting for that experience again I think last <laughs> yeah last what's the last one what's the last one for you uh, matrix matrix oh, okay wow <laughs> okay. at the time at the time yeah. when that came out I don't think people have seen uh, well, the only similarities to Matrix was a lot of anime, a lot of yeah. um, um, Japanese cartoons. We had very kind of similarities, uh, but we haven't seen it in a full feature production in that scale before to a okay. wider audience. Okay. Um, that was probably the last time. Wow, it's uh, it's a while ago. <laughs> it is a while ago, yeah. Okay. Sure, yeah. Uh, I gonna I wanna ask Jen the same question. Okay. 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 有任何可期待的东西，他觉得在有一个很好的故事的前提下，你任何敢于尝试新鲜的东西或者不同手法，在各个方面的电影，他觉得都挺值得一看的。Uh, 
他讲的其实挺挺挺挺宽泛，他没有特指，据说，比如说有一个很新颖的设计，或者有新颖的其他东西，他没有举例。但是说，就是说，你如果在电影的某个方面做到了与众不同，他觉得确实是一个，就是在电影行业中吧，就是下一个一个台阶电影制作人可以考虑的一些东西，不要太中规中矩。嗯，这个，嗯，然后他说，就是上一个他觉得有这种感觉的电影，就是《黑客帝国》，Matrix， 很久以前了，哈<笑>，很久以前，可想而知，他他觉得从从那个时候到现在，在电影行业里面，虽然有很多大片出现，但是可能他没有让他觉得特别眼前一亮的东西。所以，同样问题问你，你对以后电影行业来说，你特别想看到如何使你觉得很满意，或者说，哎，挺在电影行业的下一个阶段，大家该追求一些什么东西？在有一个好故事，而且现在有这么发达的一些后期特效去做辅助的一个前提下，你希望看到一些怎么样的突破？我觉得最美好的愿景还是希望能够看到更多的好故事吧，就是说能够真的就是打动你的、直击你内心的一个一个好的故事。我觉得电影这种艺术形式，我觉得它会，嗯，会跟之前的那些艺术形式就是一样，就是会一直的发展下去啊。我我不敢。不敢预测未来的一个电影的一个走向会是一个什么样子，因为现在这个，这个多媒体这个技术日新月异。你比方说现在这个 VR 是吧？我知道，如果说对啊 ，VR， 嗯，如果说 VR 这个东西，如果呃这种这种这种体验能够加入到电影里面去，我不知道会是一个什么样的概念。我知道有的这种新锐的这种导演啊，就是已经开始去去做这样的尝试。是比较很期待，当然是，呃，像、okay. 像《黑客帝国》那样的好故事，不知道什么时候还会再出现。当然，《黑客帝国》这种东西应该也是很多更多的借鉴了一些，嗯，比如说这个一些日本的动画片啊，是吧？那个那个，对，是还是很有很有想象力的那些那些东西。嗯，我觉得从从好的一些文学作品里面。来吸收吧，我觉得现在很很多这种经典的、经典的，能够称之为经典的这些电影，其实都是从一些优秀的文学作品，包括一些小说啊，像菲利普·迪克呀、啊，是吧？嗯，呃，斯蒂芬金啊、嗯，这些人的一些，呃，这些小说里面去提取一些营养，然后，呃，转换成一个可视的，是吧？一个有有声音的、有画面的这样一个。可以给能给我们提供更多想象的这样一个视觉的这样一个一个冲击的这样的一个一个作品，嗯，所以我、okay. 我觉得这些编剧们要加把劲儿了。对对对，<笑>是我比较期待。而且就是说，在这个特效领域上，我是觉得就是怎么样从一些新的角度出发，然后去更好的呃为这个故事服务。比方说。像这个 VR 技术，如果说可以应用在某些电影的片段里面，嗯、是吧？能够让，就是，当然这个我我 VR 这个东西可能不能全部的实现，就是说，呃，整部电影都是在 VR 这种环境里面看，可以，我觉得可以在有有些有些片段里面，观众可以是一个有有一个真正的一个临场感的一个东西。然后我们做这个特效的话，可能就会变成，呃，三百六十度的那种那种那种东西。我挺我挺期待的，我挺期待。VR 是确实挺有挑战性，因为你要放弃一些，比如说固有的我们现在一些构图，对吧？对构图呀、呃，然后它拍摄手法，你需要适当的去放弃那些，给更更多自由，就是说，甚至讲故事的方式啊。对对对对对。OK， 那我们今天就到这儿，非常感谢、呃、苏建兄来我们节目做客 ，Thank you, Levy, so much。谢谢。Thank you. Yeah, so. Good to see you.、Um, thanks, guys.、Um, yeah, have、bye. a good one. Bye bye.、Uh, bye, bye. Next bye. time, hopefully,、uh, we can、uh, yeah meet someday over there. Yeah, never know. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.